about influencing national policy. And, um, and there's actually been a lot happening on this front at the moment. This is a really good time to be involved in this. There's a lot of balls in play at the moment, much more than were, say, three years ago. So uh, one thing is this, this report, the Livingston Hope Report, uh, came out, um, what was it, uh, nine months ago uh, or so? Uh, it's, it's produced by the sort of inter um, interactive entertainment and games industry, so it's very beautifully produced. Um, but uh, here we are, at 20 rec recommendation number one, bring computer science into the national curriculum as an essential discipline. Recommendation number five, include art and computer science in the English baccalaureate. So it's absolutely on message for what we're talking about, and more or less, moreover, they just spun up a new campaign called Next Gen Skills, which is aimed at uh, pushing the 20 recommendations of this report, but they've got a little subgroup focused only on this educational stuff. So that's another example of a, you know, completely, this is completely independent of CAS, it's spun up saying, you know, there's a problem, we're going to do something about it. Really good. Um, the Royal Society is running a, an investigation into, um, com they call it the Computing in Schools panel, um, and uh, it's been working for about a year, it's, going to, it's chaired by Steve Ferber, right, an inventor of the BBC Micro and Arm and so forth, so seriously um, heavyweight guy and uh, great chair. And um, report coming out end of this year. And what will it say? It will say this stuff again. I'm, I'm on the panel, so I'm pretty confident that it will say something <laughs> like that. Right. So there's, there's, not been, there's been no seriously dissenting voice. It's probably a little bit nuanced, but the Royal Society is very heavyweight. You know, if the Royal Society says something, governments take notice. If little guerrilla groups say something, they can brush it off. They can't brush off the Royal Society. So this is good. Um, there is a current review of the national curriculum in progress at the moment. So that's a lot of things are in play there. Um, OCR launched a new GCSE in computing just this last September. So school teachers just started delivering it. Um, only for a limited number of schools at the moment. Um, I hope they're going to continue it. Uh, but we need to encourage them to do so. Exam bodies are businesses. Degree, uh, sorry, uh, what are they called? Awarding bodies, like OCR and Excel. These are the people who produce GCSEs that students can take. They're businesses, so they somehow need to be encouraged to believe that there will be enough take-up of their courses if they... Uh, so people like us saying we want them is a help, even though we're not the ultimate customers. And also, so uh, in that GCSE, have you seen the content, is it? it yes, it's, I mean, one could quibble. But, but it's kind of like saying, uh, uh, you know, if you're in... Uh, uh, if you want to be in London, and currently you're in Edinburgh, this sort of gets you to uh, Watford or something. <laughs> it's, you, it's a big step in the right direction. There's also a program of development of the ICT, because I do the, the OCR's new GCSE ICT, and they have a fifth um, optional module. Right. There are four modules you do, two pieces of coursework and two exams, and one of the pieces of coursework it, um, that you can opt for instead right. of the, the more traditional one is to write a program, and that was their that was their sort of fudge for right. those who didn't know down that route. route. And so you can um, app uh, <coughs> excuse me, um, iPhone app development is an acceptable part of that. When I told my the girls that I teach, that was what we might be doing. Their eyes just <laughs> like, which illustrates one of the headings you had in the previous slide. Yeah, I didn't want to interrupt you when you had that. Oh, their the eyes lit up when. When, when I said, how many of you be up for iPhone app development? Like, oh, yes. Mm -hmm. And they're not now wanting me to even s consider the simpler option of the other right. coursework module, which will, is more likely they'll get higher maps, not bothered about that. They, they can see pound signs for it's incredible potential. Isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> really motivating. And I have to say that the existing ICT national curriculum is very short. It's written on sort of two pages, right? And within it, a good ICT teacher today can teach a lot of this computing stuff. It's just that you I have the feeling, I mean, looking at the school, the teachers, the, the teachers have all congregated on one table for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> but I have the impression that if you are motivated and, and, um, and well organized and, and fe feeling well qualified school teacher, you can teach this stuff, but you're a bit swimming against the tide uh, to do so, and, and you feel a bit isolated. Is that right? big part with teachers in ICT departments who thought, like you said, who, who believe that ICT um, or the use of a computer is the Microsoft suite of applications. 
because many schools are battled to even deliver more than that. They're, they're told from on high, you will teach your pupils how to make a PowerPoint. No, no offence to your yeah, 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 no, message, but... Uh, Microsoft is four square saying, yeah. please don't te teach yeah. office in schools. Well, well, I, w I wish you could tell my colleagues in my department that, because that's... Well, tell me any time you like. Yeah. 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 Well, while we're on the upbeat, yeah. yes. it's interesting that the launch for the Apps for Good Yes, Terry. They had like 1,500 schools got in touch with them on fairly low levels of marketing, saying we want to get our kids involved. So I think there is a willingness out there in the schools to get engaged in the right sort of models if they're offered. I mean, 1,500 schools yeah. with virtually no publicity is pretty uh, impressive. I have another stat, sorry, with yeah. the, with the yeah. one um, to do with the number of people doing it, just it makes it even more stark. Which said, um, there's a, um, I teach an independent school in my town, uh, the state school, um, the, the IT teacher there taught 4% of the number of girls who did computing last year and there were only four in this class. And that's four percent of all the girls that did A level computing last year. Well, one teacher, one taught teacher taught four yeah. percent of them. So I mean, that's, <laughs> just, that's a bit of an indictment. If a girl's a particular disaster in this whole whole area uh, of the sort of image problem about, about computing. I should stress, um, Simon, very quickly. We, when I was inviting people, I kind of invited people proportionally in terms of ICT teachers or employers or practitioners, and I did make a point of inviting a disproportionate number of women um, but I know because I do actually know some um, <laughs> and um, despite my profession um, and um, so I'm, I was a little disappointed that we haven't had a stronger response or for all sorts of different reasons it's probably just circumstances but I was hoping that, that, that we would be more strongly represented with women in computing here but unfortunately it hasn't worked out that way um, and it uh, was tough. Two out of 30 is probably really strong representation. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming. <laughs> in, in, in data terms. Well, we got two of the best. Yeah, of course. Um, can I come back to the, the school stuff? Because I think where, where we'd like to finish is, you know, what, 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 might, what might we all do to support teachers and do a better job? Ahead? So there's, um, but let's just finish off on what's happening at the um, national level here. Yeah. I, the good thing is that not only is there a lot of um, stuff in motion, but also the, the overall storyline is very much in tune which, with what the government is trying to do and what Gove and Gibber are trying to do. Right? They're saying, what does Gove say? The whole thrust of the new science curriculum, which he was dissing at this point, um, empowers students to be consumers of science and concentrates on engaging students with the debate about GM foods, is a shift away from preparing students to be scientists. So he's arguing for a shift from sort of consumers to, to, to being a, a, a producer, a scientist. And Nick Gibbs saying too much focus on using your not enough on fundamentals and conceptual understanding. So this is kind of, the, 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 I didn't tell them to say this, the, 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 the stuff that we're, we're trying to say in CAS is very much in tune with this, so that's a good thing. And in fact, we're we'll just beginning uh, to get a hearing at, um, at government level, level. So I mean, did meet um, Nick Gibbs, one of the ministers for education a couple of weeks ago. Um, and various officials from the DFE. So CAS has gone from being a guerrilla group that nobody had heard of into being a group that the DFE now thinks, oh, we'll ask them if we want to know about this kind of stuff. So that's really good. Uh, so, last thing, let's go back to, um, uh, back to teaching. So what you were saying about apps for good and the big take up there, uh, is it Ian? Sorry. Yeah, Tony. Tony, Tony, sorry, Tony. Yeah. Um, is as absolutely true. One of the things that I, I was a bit concerned about to begin with was I thought, well, maybe ICT teachers think that things are fine, right? And are happy with the way they are and uh, really don't want to be interfered with. That would be a problem, right? Uh, but in fact, my experience is that not only are they unhappy with the way things are, many teachers are unhappy with the way things are, but they're very eager to change. And they say, look, we're teachers, we can learn. Don't diss us and say, you know, we're, in, we're not, we know we're not well enough qualified, is what they tell me. Like, very, very few, as uh, Jason was saying, three out of 10,000, very few, even specialist IT teachers, IC teachers have a computer science degree. And this all feeds back into itself. It makes it a sort of lower state of subject, which makes it less attractive for IT professionals to go into it. Um, so, we can do something about all of this. Teachers that feel isolated. Am, am I, am, is this a, a, an accurate sort of summary about, sort of, in, insofar as you can summarise just in a few words? I feel as if ICT teachers tell me they, you know, they're from Pool in Dorset and they feel they're like one ICT teacher in the school and, and, and it's hard for them to swim against the tide. And that all we have to do, maybe, is to sort of, you know, get behind them 
and, and give them a bit of support and they'll and, and some uh, you know training opportunities and so forth and, and then the whole sort of vicious circle downwards will turn into a virtuous spiral <coughs> upwards. Do you think that, am I talking nonsense here? Do you think that makes sense? I, I feel as if IC teachers are, are a hugely positive resource here. They're eager to learn and actually rather good at teaching often. Actually, there's a subset, I would argue there's a subset of teachers are like that, and there are several of them represented in the room today. Would you say that's fair, Miles? <laughs> oh, <laughs> <laughs> if, if not, this is really what's going to From the director of the world. There, there are, yeah, it's, it, there are two camps, certainly. Yeah. There are some who are quite happy teaching what they know and love and mm -hmm. don't see the issue. But I think certainly the new generation of teachers yeah. who are entering the profession know that there is more that they can do and feel constrained by a number of the, the, the pressures that you identify on the slides. It wasn't really worth the wait. I probably it? see a self-selected <laughs> group of teachers mostly. Like I see the ones who are converted. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So there's I'm also, sure buy some. There's also curriculum constraints in a school where mm -hmm. um, the adoption of a new subject means money. A school yeah. is having to pay to either employ somebody who's not got the skills or to free time in the timetable or mm -hmm. um, by providing an option that then means pupils are going to take that option and not take a more traditional subject which could have knock-on effect for say uh, um, you know, Latin or German or whatever that happens to be in the same option block. Whereas my school has had to a lesser degree because we, we give classes even if there's only a size of one. And being an independent school pupils can pick what they you want state schools don't have that sort of luxury. They need a set minimum class size. You kind of need to do everything at all levels. Well, not just support the teachers, as it were, who are in the classroom, but they want them to make the head teachers and the governors feel we're a good school. We should be offering computing as a as a discipline. Well, my high avenues all the way up for gifted and talented as an extra. Um, and then, if that is successful, that's way um, I'm not happy that yeah. that's the avenue that has to be taken. Yeah. Because I think those who are not gift, gifting talented would get more from it, um, if, if nothing else. Can I ask a question? You said something about classes of one. So I mentored a girl study at a, at a school in Reading, and they ran an A level program for just her um, because she was really, really passionate about it. I mean, is that, is that something that happens often? No, usually the, head, the, the truth is there's lots of constraints just in terms of funding and then the heads would rule it out, they would like it to happen, they sometimes organise it as an extracurricular model, mm -hmm. but it's pretty rare. The interesting thing is looking at some of those rarities, though, there was a school in uh, Reading that say seven years ago had a really good head of IT, they had some like 12 teachers teaching IT in the middle of Silicon Valley where they were told they couldn't recruit teachers. They had a really thriving, large A-level group mm -hmm. of about 80 students. It can be done where the wherewithal is, is there, but you do need strong, you need good leadership in the school, you need all the, the things yeah. lined up, and I'm afraid that now that's mitigated against. So you've got a real political battle on your hands to change that round. I think Drew's right. There is little incentive for any head teacher to go down this route today because of all the pressures that are on them. And, and I would also add to that, if, the, if it is a hard subject to do, that's yeah. bad for schools to lead tables. So yeah. my GCSE results in my school yeah. are out today. Yeah. I've got 100% A star to A for my class, mm -hmm. which, which is phenomenal because some of them were they predicted C's and D's from, the, um, from data that we have in school. Um, likelihood is a computer studies qualification, would they, these same girls wouldn't be getting A stars to A. I'll probably have 100% A, a star to C, or, but that might be a B's and C's. So I'd still get above the, 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 the figure that schools are looking for, but not as high. Value added, which right. is important to schools, would not be good. Because in ICT qualifications, as they stand, you can get high grades for lots of kids because it's heavily coursework biased. Yeah, and I, I've given an example before a conference about um, the, and I don't know if anyone knows, the A-level Welsh board exam board um, coursework that my um, A-level pupils do in year 12 consists of um, three, three components. One is, and don't laugh, um, they've got to make a mail merge document. This is, so this is 17 year olds, first year of A-level. Uh, their coursework, which is 40, so it's 60% uh, of the A's. They've got to do. Um, very hard, not so hard. <laughs> <laughs> They've got to make a mail merge document and provide all the data, and the data is a large part of making up the people's names. Do you know, I think we finally have to provide six 
um, records. Yeah, yes, yeah, it. Um, <laughs> secondly, a publisher document. You can't really do it on any other thing. It's got to be. Uh, there's yeah. no other software will allow me to do that. So it's literally. This is a course made for Microsoft. And thirdly, and this is the bit that most people laugh at, six slide. PowerPoint slideshow in which in so which it's, it's, it's a tick box it's a tick, exactly Ian's doing that in and um, with six year olds yeah and, and I'm doing it with yeah. 16 17 year olds and it's a tick box exercise where they've got to um, do all the things I tell them not to do because of the death by PowerPoint um, uh, power, presentation Zen idea of, of not having simplicity of text, not putting animations in, not putting sound effects. That's the only way they can get full marks is if they put sound effects in, if they've animations, if they've got things like videos embedded. So <laughs> th th all those things make it a so 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 it's a real struggle. No, no, so, so these are obstacles. They're not just going to happen overnight. But I think if we have a somehow a, what. When you're just sitting on your own, it seems like an insuperable obstacle. But my experience over the last three years has been that actually there's a lot of doors that when you push on them, they're more open than you think they're going to be. Um, and that if we have a clear idea of our destination and we all pull in the same direction at once and all write the same kind of letters right, to, the, to the same people, that things will change. Right? So, you know, so, so in other words, we shouldn't assume that uh, we're going to go on having A-levels like that. Right? Because I think actually the government, without any incentive for us, is likely to remove equivalency for uh, ICT GCSEs or the, or the sort of four GCSEs for one diploma. It probably isn't going to happen in the future. So head teachers may then, so it may be, there may then not be the easy alternative, is what I mean. So things may change, and but, but because things are changing, we have to be, we need to be pushing at the moment that things are changing. So when the ice sets again, to make the change the metaphor, <laughs> it sets in a better place. So, can you, I think we've got to avoid yeah, done. describing the solution in terms of just education as opposed to learning. Recently, Young Rewired State, um, which was about a group of under 18s across the country in 14 centres, were programming and hacking government data. They went to Microsoft offices in London to present their work. An interesting statistic is that 95% of those youngsters that were capable of presenting their work, programming to a high level, were self-taught. Yeah. The, the young people that you're all talking about are accessing technology mostly outside of the yeah. classroom. Mm -hmm. If the subject of computing cannot make good use of the internet as a method of teaching and learning, independently of structures of education than what other subject can. We ought to be looking at a method of delivering what's needed that is fit for the next 10 years, not the last. And when you go through the problems of uh, listening about courses and GCSEs and attainment and league tables, you're describing the past, not the future. And we have to take advantage of the fact that most young people are accessing technology and are willing to access technology through the internet, through the web, through other means, alongside the changes that you want to make in schools. I, mean, I, I actually agree with that because I do think there's a much more deep-seated cultural thing going on uh, quite broadly. Um, I mean, I'm dated by, look at the colour of my hair, but when I was at high school going to university, what we did in our spare time was hack. I mean, we were playing on BBC Micros and Ataris and that's what everybody I knew who was cool was doing. And at the moment, um, and I don't know why this has changed, it's just not cool to do that. But it's also true that if you look at models in, for example, sport and music and art, if yeah. you're very good at football, you don't go and grumble at your local school to improve the quality of football coaching. You get involved in local football club. If you're a musician, you get involved in a local orchestra. We've got to use outside school alongside inside school effectively. And there are plenty of models in other areas of the curriculum that do exactly that. Why don't we make the IT industry or ask the IT industry to act like the premiership football clubs and start um, summer schools. Every year let's have summer schools, tech camps, everything that will act as, as a way of inspiring young people and linking them to the adults and the mo that, that you're trying to do. So in other words it's not just about linking adults to teachers, it's about linking those adults to young people directly. Folks, on, on that, sorry, on that bombshell, I'm going to ask that you take the break. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, just, just, uh, Simon, thank you very much. This is, yeah. This is just, uh, this, this, if you're
you're interested in this stuff, you should, being a member of the working group is very low, low overhead thing. Like you just want to name it. So good luck. So good job. Good job. It's, um, it's, uh, it's just a coalition thing. Definitely. Simon, thank Thanks. you very much. Great. Uh, Take a 15 minute break for coffee, so and then um, afterwards, um, Ade is going to be um, doing another presentation on a different topic, I think. Um, but thanks all for your views on that. I think it's something we could probably talk about all day, and hopefully, what we'll, we'll, this will inspire. So, by all means, please hand out your business cards, make sure everyone's got your email addresses because I can see and definitely sign up for the Competing at Schools group because these discussions are going on all the time um, on, the, on, that, uh, on that group. So, please get involved.